um, that we that we can um, you know work so well together um, to to give our clients um, such great service. So um, if if those of you who have colleagues that aren't online, um, please would you just extend our grateful thanks um, and we and just know that you are appreciated. All right. Okay. So nine thirty it is. So I'm Bronwyn. And um, Sister Bronwyn and I run the nursing um, uh, management program at, at Next Biosciences, or the nursing support program rather. And what we do here from a nursing perspective is we support all of our um, uh, products. So um, you'll, talk, uh, you'll see just now, as so I'm going to just go through a little bit of our pregnancy journey. Mm -hmm. So we support then um, the teaching of, of um, phlebotomy teams out there. Um, to assist with, with doing correct uh, non-invasive prenatal um, sample collections. We also then have our net cells product, which, um, you know, the nursing team teaches the, the gynees and the midwives out in, in field, um, you know, to do optimal collections. And we also manage a, a newborn screening program, which you guys probably are familiar with, with regard to the little hill prick samples. But that's not what we're talking about today. <laughs> we're talking about so the non-invasive prenatal test. So I'm going to start a, a slideshow presentation, just basically on, on the gist of, of getting accurate and incorrect sampling, because you know that's the ideal, is to get a good sample um, from the outset so that we don't have redraws and a delay in um, turnaround time on results. All right, so here we go. I'm going to start then. Um, the slide presentation. All right, so we are at Next Biosciences, and then Next Biosciences is then um, the, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, is um, a leading South Africa biotech company, which um, combines medicine, science, technology to invest in innovative health technologies with a core focus to enable people to positively impact, impact their own um, health with science. All right, so I'm just going to show you this little video, which just showcases and sort of puts into a nutshell what, what we actually do, and then we'll just move on to the NIPT testing. Out of the chaos and uncertainty of change, something extraordinary is happening. Evolving. Becoming. Birthing. A world where science fiction becomes science fact. Where we can reduce the risk of genetic disorders before birth and eliminate the inheritance of genetic conditions. Where we can collect stem cells and cryogenically store them for future potential therapies and harness the healing power of the placenta to create regenerative biological products. Where we can create tests to detect viruses to make the world a safer place. A world where disease is no longer inevitable and the possibilities for restoring hope and health are limitless. Welcome to the world of Next Biosciences. Nothing is inevitable. Anything is possible. All right, guys, I'm just trying to get back to my slideshow. <laughs> All right. Here we go. All right. So, okay, so that's just, um, yeah, our next biosciences in a nutshell. So we're very excited about, um, you know, 
applying science to medicine to our client's health journey. So, yeah, that just some of it can blow your mind. Hey, um, if there are any um, comments or questions, you're more than welcome to pop them in, in the question box and we can deal with that or the chat box and we'll deal with those later. All right. So as we see in our pregnancy journey, where we start with our clients is our non-invasive prenatal testing. All right. Um, so that is then those those blood draws that um, your teams at, at Markham Partners and Pathcare are assisting us with. Okay. So the safe screening test from 10 weeks of pregnancy for detecting chromosomal abnormalities in the unborn baby. And then moving on in the journey, once the little one is born, we are able to do stem cell banking for parents. So that is where we collect um, the cord blood, which is left over in the cord after baby's born and some of the tissue. And um, we cryopreserve um, those stem cells for future potential use. And then after the baby's born, we do that uh, newborn screening test. So um, metabolic screens for um, about 24 metabolic diseases on the newborn. Um, and those diseases often are not um, apparent at birth. So do early screening can pick up issues early and we're able to um, assist with treatment before the little one actually gets sick and complications. All right. Okay, but what focusing on today, as I said, is our non-invasive prenatal test. Okay, so TriScreen um, is our product name, and that is, a, you know, it's safely and non-invasively screened for the most common chromosomal abnormalities as early as 10 weeks of gestation. And I think just from a, a phlebotomy perspective, and when we're interacting with clients, that is one of the most important aspects of, of this test, is that we cannot do the sample collections before the client is 10 weeks pregnant. Um, and sometimes that causes a bit of frustration with people that you see because the patient might be oh, nine weeks and six days or nine weeks and five days. And you say, oh, I'm nearly 10 weeks, please do the test. We can't, okay, because it will not meet um, a QR, so quality control, and um, we will have to do a redraw, okay? So we've got to be um, specific to these clients and say we need to be over 10 weeks. And the reason for that is that this little person, you know, because the placenta is that which which is releasing um, the, pl the placenta is um, releasing the DNA uh, or the, the uh, what we saw called cell free DNA and that needs to be sufficient to, to test and then uh, before 10 weeks sometimes that is not enough. All right. So um, our test then basically screens for um, three chromosomal um, abnormalities. So it is a trisomy 21 which is your Down syndrome, trisomy 18, which is Edwards syndrome, and trisomy 13, which is Patel syndrome. All right. So that's just some um, background information. And then, you know, when we're looking at the genome, we're looking to see, um, you know, at the, that we all have 22 uh, pairs of chromosomes, and the 23rd pair is that um, which determines the gender. So we've got your XX and your XY chromosomes on the genome. All right. And then I'm sure you are familiar with um, the test requisition form. Oopsie, sorry about that. Go back here. <laughs> so that um, the tri-screen test requisition uh -huh. form is looking like this. All right. And the uh -huh. most, another very, very important aspect of, of doing this kind of testing or sample collection for us is that all of the information on the test requisition form needs to be um, completed. Okay, so if it's a single pregnancy or a twin pregnancy, we, we need to know <laughs> because if there's a twin and we don't know about it, then, um, you know, the, the results sometimes don't make a lot of sense because there's a lot of DNA floating around in the sample. And if it's a twin pregnancy, we understand that. All right, um, and then okay. the test that is requested um, is indicated by the doctor. And then um, there's alternative, uh, well, not alternative options, but additional testing that can be requested. But we don't, the parent or the mommy, um, expectant mommy cannot make the decision to add the extra testing on. Okay, so the extra testing are for um, clients that have had, uh, you know, recurrent miscarriages, for instance, or a previous pregnancy with a chromosomal abnormality. And, and those are done um, in addition, and they do come at an extra cost. Okay. Another important thing. Another important thing. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you. My ask that everybody please mute because it's very noisy in the background. I see that some people use my link to join the meeting, the webinar. Will everybody please mute? 
Thank you very much. <laughs> Please mute all the speakers. Thank you. Sorry, Bronwyn. No, no, sorry about that. I was trying to talk over the noise, <laughs> but I appreciate it. Thanks very much. All right, so just moving back then. So our test requisition form. So, you know, always, um, you know, completed from the top to the bottom, sort of. And then what is, if there's any information left out, we would then, um, our client services team will also then assist is to, you know, for instance, if there's no um, test requested on the form, we receive it back. We could, um, you know, confirm what test is requested with the GANI, but that wastes time, okay? And that wastes time in the sense that we can't process that sample straight away and it uh, uh, lengthens the turnaround time for the client. So if we try and get, um, you know, a complete form um, on, on when we receive the sample, that's great. Now, to a large degree, I mean, sometimes that's not the phlebotomist's fault because the test hasn't been written on the form, but we try and intercept that um, even before the test is even done. Okay. All right. Um, gestation age, very, very important, as I alluded to just now, is because we can't test these little ones or the mommies before 10 weeks. Okay. So the gestational age on the form it says how many weeks and how many days on whichever date. So let's say for arguments like the mother is seeing the gynae today, the 9th of February, né? but she's only like uh, nine weeks and five days. So that will be written there, nine weeks and five days on the 9th of February. Okay, but she's going to come for the blood draw next week on, on Tuesday. So that's the 14th. That's okay, because then she will be already 10 weeks. So we don't need to change the date here. So it's the date that she was seen, how many weeks on which day, and then the date of blood draw, and the lab does the maths to make sure that, um, you know, and also you as a, as a practitioner, you can like, work out, is she over 10 weeks? And, you know, these mommies are really, um, you know, organized these days with their pregnancy apps and things and things. So they they know when they they over the 10 weeks. Okay. And then just um, in between, you know, is there a vanishing was there a vanishing twin any time during the pregnancy? Now, a vanishing twin is if the mommy goes for her six-week checkup at the gynae and they're all excited and they do the scan and poof, we see two little hearts beating. Doof, 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 doof. Very excited. And then she goes back again at a 12-week scan and there's only one heartbeat, which means one twin is demised. Okay. So that twin that is demised is still releasing DNA for about four weeks. Okay, so let's say she comes to you, uh, we, we, we will intercept you, so we will know about this. Okay, so if the patient has a vanishing, uh, if it says vanishing twin, yes, we must only do the test four weeks after they saw that the twin wasn't there. Does that make sense? Okay, because if we do it before then, it means that that's the twin that was demised is still releasing DNA and that can interfere with the results. Okay, but when it says yes, um, it, it, the, in highlighted in red there, talks of, I think we can see the form a little bit better on the next slide, let's just see. Um, why is my slide not working? There we go. Um, yeah, we go, you see, so it says their blood draw recommended to be performed four weeks after the vanishing twin was last seen. Okay, so this is very, very important. Sometimes um, you will be the first people <clears throat> to see the form because the patient might come from the doctor's room directly to the path lab. And if it's ticked, yes, we must just confirm that information. And that is why um, our telephone number is also then most on the form. So if there's any queries or you're not sure, rather just call us first, and then we can just make sure that we're doing the blood test at the right time. Okay, because if we do pick up a, a vanishing twin and the test is done too early, we would need to do a redraw. Okay, so we want to try and eliminate that as much as possible. Okay, and then the BMI is also very important, weight and height. And this is relevant to um, what we call the, um, the fetal fraction. So the fetal fraction can be lower in people with a higher BMI. Okay, so it makes sense then if we get a result and we've got a low fetal fraction, um, we understand why if the BMI information is recorded here. Okay, and it doesn't have to be exact weight on the day, more or less. Okay, so when last did she see the doctor, how much she weighed? Because some of these mommies don't like to weigh themselves all the time. <laughs> all right, <clears throat> again, data blood draw, very important. Um, and then if there's anything significant, let's say for argument's sake, there was, oh, it was a difficult bleed, you had to plico three times. Important, um, maybe just to note, is that if the patient tells you she's on Ecotrin, 
Um, you know, Ecotrin is given to a pregnant woman a lot of the time to help with a placenta to perfuse. And um, that can also interfere sometimes, they say, with the fetal fraction. So if we get a, a patient that says she's on Ecotrin, just write it there and then um, it, the results make more sense. And then your name is the is on the form as, as the person doing the blood draw. And then the signature of the client is very important because if she doesn't sign, <clears throat> doesn't sign excuse me, then she's in effectively not giving consent and we can't actually process the sample. And then um, she the, the date that she signs the form is not necessarily the same day that you do the blood draw. See, I just want to check there's something in the chat box. Um, can I quickly have a look? Please see our guidance. Do not. Okay, perfect. We will follow up on that. So um, that the are, so it's the guidance at Wilmed. Okay, perfect. So thank you, Natasha. We will um, make sure that all the guidance, that is actually something on, on our uh, strategy list for, for the moment, is to ensure that all the doctors have the most up-to-date um, uh, test requisition form. So thank you for, for your comment and bringing that up. All right. Um, okay, let's just get that out the way. Okay, and then moving on. Okay, so your trial screen kit. So you know that this is what the little boxy looks like. So inside the transcreen kit is a strict tube. Okay, the little like um, camouflage toppy over there. Um, the biohazard bag, the absorbent sheet just to prevent, um, you know, pr uh, look after any leaks if possible that do happen. And then the courier bag. So <laughs> this image is a little bit old. So the courier bag now is the gray one for DSV. Okay. Um, so those of you that are sending us samples via the courier, you'll see your, your little bag is, is different. Okay, and then, um, okay, so that's what you have. And then remembering, okay. Okay, before I go into that video, I'm just going to explain the video. So this little video that you'll see is also part of our marketing tool. So what we do is we, my nursing team will come out to the phlebotomy labs um, and also just share this, this with you that you could also then share with your teams. It's just a very simple way to explain the actual sample collection process um, in, a, in a way that, that we understand. But I'm just going to revert back to the kits quickly. So you'll see that there's only one strict tube in, in the kit. And that is because we only want one tube back. All right. But we do know that um, some patients are difficult to bleed. And, um, and also the vacuum sometimes on the tubes just stops and they stop flowing and we only got half a tube of blood. So remember, it is on a, on a slide to follow is that the ideal volume is between seven to eight mils. Okay, and you'll see on your strict tube where the little hourglass is, we chose you where the expiry date is, there's a little hourglass there. If we fill the tube beyond that, closer to the dopey, you know you've got enough blood. Okay, if you find that she's maybe got about three or four mils in a tube and that's not going to be enough to test. Then you can take a second tube and send them both together, both in, in the box. Okay, please don't combine the sample um, yourselves because you know that if you're taking the rubber stopper out of the tube, you break the integrity of the tube. <clears throat> and especially those that have been traveled by road or aeroplane, um, those samples can leak. Okay, all right. Well, let's just quickly watch this because it's quite sweet. <laughs> The TriScreen kit consists of one strict tube, one biohazardous bag, one absorbent sheet, and one courier bag. Before drawing the blood, please ensure the test requisition form is completed and full. Please check the doctor and the patient. information is completed. The nurse performing the blood draw must complete the date of the blood draw and the gestational age of the patient at the time of the blood draw. The patient must be at least 10 weeks gestational age before the blood draw. Please ensure that the patient has signed the test requisition form before completing the blood draw. In order to do the tri-screen NIPT blood draw, please use the strict tube provided in the kit, ensuring the tube is not expired. Use a 22 gauge needle from a suitable vein in the patient's arm. Please do not use a butterfly needle or a syringe as they may cause hemolysis. Ensure you collect eight milliliters or three quarters of the tube. Should there not be enough blood, 
the sample will be rejected by the laboratory. Gently invert the tube 8 to 10 times to prevent hemolysis. Ensure the tube is labelled with the patient's full name and date of birth. When packing the TriScreen NIPT collection kit, place the tube in the biohazardous bag and ensure that it is properly sealed. Place the biohazardous bag containing the blood tube as well as the completed test requisition form into the box and place the box into the courier bag provided. Once the collection kit is ready for collection, please contact the TriScreen Client Services team by emailing triscreen at nextbio.co.za or calling 082-386-5200. Arrange the courier. Once received, our team will advise whether the next biosciences driver or our preferred courier service provider will collect. Should you require additional stock of the TriScreen NIPT kits, please contact our TriScreen client services team. Kindly take note that the kits take up to two working days to arrive. If you have any additional questions, our TriScreen client services team would be happy to assist. screen for Down syndrome and other the white screen okay sorry about that <laughs> technology <laughs> all right um are there any questions i did see a question with regard to having second strict tube so what we can do is we can send when you order your kits we um you know depending on the need or the amount of samples that you're doing we send you a, according to that but what we could do is just send a pack of five extra tubes so you do have spare um in 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 the department so um that's that's what we can do so when you do order your kits um please just if you don't have any spare and you're doing a lot of blood draws then just ask for a couple of spare ones for this instance okay all right perfect and then another thing that we have with regard to samples being rejected or they don't mute meet quality control is samples that hemolyze okay now remember hemolysis um will interfere with the sample results because the cell wall membrane breaks okay and this um, causes them to release um, certain types of enzymes into into the sample as well as um you know the blood cells then break into the plasma and um once it's 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 spun down, that plasma can interfere the, the blood cells that, that come into the plasma that we actually test can give us an inaccurate result. So we can't actually test the sample that has hemolyzed. Okay. So hemolysis happens for a, for a number of reasons. And the one is most often because we put too much pressure on that sample when it's going into the tube. Okay. So um, if if the patient is, especially in the winter time, and if they come to you and they go, there's tiny little veins and you can hardly see anything. I mean, I'm sure you guys are, are more skilled at, at finding veins than, than I am. But always a nice idea is to, to warm the, the vena puncture site um, making sure, and then once you've, you've you identified your vein, you're going to just, make, when you're using the cleaning alcohol, just to ensure that that area is dry um, before inserting the needle. Um, always try and use your median cubital vein because, you know, that's on the elbow because it always gives a nice sample. But the reality is that a lot of people don't, you know, you battle sometimes to find um, a, a vein there. So, um, yeah, going into the hand or um, on the arm, you know, you guys know more than I do <laughs> from an anatomy point of view where the beautiful veins are. All right. And then also just the size of the needle does matter. Okay. So nothing smaller than a 21 gauge. So um, we use the green or the black needles um, just purely because the bore of the needle is just too narrow on a butterfly, for instance, or um, using a needle in a syringe and then pulling the blood through the butterfly needle damages that cell wall membrane and the sample can hemolyze. Okay. And then you'll see to just invert the tube gently to mix the adjutant that's in the tube with the blood 
so that it keeps the sample stable. Okay, and I'm sure you know that you're not going to shake a tube. All right. Um, again, and then also if you're having a difficult a lady with difficult veins, you know, it's, we always have a, a I am, have the tendency to try let's leave that tourniquet on so that the, the the vein pops out, you know. But if we're leaving it there for longer than two minutes, we're already damaging the cells within that vein before we're even getting the blood out. Um, if the patient's already had a blood draw in the last couple of days, try and avoid using that same vein um, because it's, it's a little bit um, uh, damaged or bruised. Um, again, don't use that butterfly needle. Um, apply additional and then also don't use a needle and a syringe to draw the blood out because then we actually are damaging those cells as they come through. We've spoken about shaking the tube. Um, freezing the sample. Okay, now sometimes that um, happens, you know, we can keep those samples in a refrigerator overnight if they're going to be only correct, uh, collected by the courier or transported the following day. But some of us have got these fridges that get really cold and they freeze without us even realizing it. So just be very, very cognizant of that because if the sample does freeze, we cannot use it. All right. And then another thing, please don't forget to contact us to um, collect the sample, because remember, we've got we've got a five day transit time. So, you know, but we don't want the samples to hang around for five days. Um, because obviously, the sooner we get the result, the blood, the sooner we can process it, the sooner we can get the result. Out. OK. All right, so I've, I've mentioned all of this, but this is just a, a breakdown again. We're going to use uh, the blood draw um, a protocol then is using the transcreen kit, which you receive. Please always, very, very important, check the expiry date on a restrict tube. Now, we would obviously, we're not going to send short dated sample uh, kits out, okay? So, but there are kits in, in areas that don't frequently do blood draws and they can hang around for a year or two before they're even used, okay? So, I know the current tubes that we've got aren't expiring probably October 2024, give or take. So just be just cognizant of, of the um, expiry date, please, because if the sample arrives in the expired tube, we can't process. All right, we've spoken of this. Um, draw at least eight moles, three quarters of the tube. Um, if there is less than eight moles, we can't use the sample. So then just try and send a second sample. Okay, label the tube again, please. This is very important with the patient's full name, so first name, last name, and the date of birth. And this name needs to be the same name that's on the test requisition form. I know some people have got more than one name, and the num nom maybe is on the test requisition form, and then her ID name is on this tube. Okay, they don't match. So the name that's on the form must match the name that's on the tube. All right. And then we've spoken of this. Try and use the median cubital vein. Um, alcohol is dry. Don't use a butterfly. Um, we've spoken about this in our show. <laughs> um, this was uh, this this statement was actually put in here before we were advised to stop yeah, using needle and a syringe. Sorry, there's yeah. someone else that we need to mute, please. Thank you. All right. So, um, using a needle and a syringe, I made this very big mistake once. So I was taking blood from a very very difficult lady. I think I picked her about three or four times. Eventually, I resorted to a needle and a syringe because I actually didn't know what else to do. And what did I do? I was very silly and I plopped the needle through this rubber stopper of the tube and the pressure of the syringe pushing the blood into the tube let the tube explode. So I lost it. So please, we don't do that. And I'm sure you know more than I do that that's not a good idea. All right. Um, okay, so we can just then move on. All right, so um, the... Oh, sorry, let me go back here. All right, so with regards to how the process is going to happen. So to a large degree, the, the um, path labs that are situated within the hospitals that are close to the doctor's rooms, the doctor may send the patient directly to you with a test requisition form, okay? Um, so you then will assist the patient, do the blood draw, ensure that the form is then completed, popped in the boxy with the, the sample and then um, sent to us. The patient will not need any uh, medical aid approval or whatever for their blood draw. They are they do understand that they, they, if the medical aid doesn't pay, they are liable for the cost of the test, okay? They will not be paying any money to ESA, okay? So the patient does not pay phlebotomy fees, doesn't pay for the cost of the test 
to that okay we will sort all of that out um, from our head office okay it is imperative that the patient is at least 10 weeks pregnant and I'm, I'm saying that again because we need to be very very cognizant of this all right um both the patient's name we've we spoke again about that the the tube is clearly marked dates of blood draw time of blood draw and um the details need to be completed on the test requisition form. The patient needs to sign the form. Okay. Again, reiterate that chomples in a expired tube will be rejected. All right. And then always just contact us to, to arrange for collection. So just to note, if it is a late collection, let's have arguments like the lady comes to you late afternoon. Okay. It's not, in reality, we will not be able to collect that sample that day. That's okay. We keep it with you guys until the next day, it can stay in the fridge, um, and then it will be collected the following day. All right, I just want to check this. Bronwyn, excuse me. Bronwyn. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I just asked Desiree um, and the others that's not on mute, please mute your speakers. The background voice is it might get very difficult for the people to hear. Thanks, Erica. Okay. Yeah, that's that's that, that's what I was reading in the messages. Thanks so much. See. All right. Um, okay. And then you may come across this form. Okay. It's T21. Has anyone seen one of these yet? <laughs> All right. So a T21 is a lower cost option for some clients. See, so what it is, it's when it talks T21, we only screening for trisomy 21 for Down syndrome. Okay. So we can do both in single and twin pregnancies. Okay, um, and the only difference on the form is what it looks like. Okay, so we still have to fill in the gestational age, we still have to fill in the dates of blood draw, we still need to be cognizant of uh, the vanishing twin, we still need BMI. The only thing that we on the form is it's only going to, and we need that the clients are informed, but you can, you know, um, uh, reiterate or emphasize or ask if they do ask you, are we going to know gender on this test? No. Okay, so the T21 does not include gender and does not include screening for trisomy 13 and trisomy 18. Okay, so it is a, what we say, like it is a lower cost option um, for, for clients out there. Okay, so if you do see a different form, it's not a different test. It's exactly the same test, but when we receive it, the side, we know what we're going to test. Okay, all right. So when, we, when the samples are all done, um, please contact us for collection. Okay, so the easiest way I think is just to call the, the cell phone number. Um, that's also on the, the sample collection box, but I'm sure you've got it all on your speed dial list there in your depots, yes? <laughs> all right, so call us for collection or um, you can email us a copy of the test requisition form to, to the trash screen inbox. Okay, once the collection has been arranged, the team will respond to your email advising that the collection has been arranged. Okay, if the samples need to be collected via courier and there's a, um, they will then send an airway bill to you on email. Okay, you guys will need to print this and this goes in the outside of the courier bag, you know, the flyer, the little see-through plastic sleevey on the outside. Okay, if you do not have a flyer, the couriers that arrive to collect have SPI, um in their vans. Okay, always place the regional test requisition form and any other supplementary documents. For example, the first trimester screening results or the second trimester screen the patient may bring them with, those all go inside the box. The weighable flyer on the outside of the box. Okay, I mean on the outside of the flyer, on the outside of the plastic bag. Okay, and then no ordering of new kits. Okay, so... Um, just uh, every time you, you're feeling you're running low. So don't wait until you've used your last one, please. Okay. <laughs> if you've got maybe two left over in stock, then you send an email to TriScreen requesting the number of kits and the um, contact person of who will receive these because that's the name that we need to put on the label for delivery or to um, the, the people that are local in, in Joburg and Pretoria, our drivers will deliver the stock to you. But we just need to know who the contact person is. Okay. All right. Now is the time for questions. Are there any questions?
Ronwen? Yes. Hi. Um, could you maybe be able to send us the videos that you used currently? Would you be able to share it with us via email? Yes. So do you want this? I mean, I can share the entire presentation if you like, or um, we do yes, have a, a you. OK, I can do that. Um, and then there's that um, the YouTube link to that little animated video um, we do have available. Um, and I think that also already has been been shared with some of the depots, but I'm more than well uh, happy to to share that with um, everybody that's attending today. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's Susan speaking. Now. So if is there who would you like us to email it to or should we just distribute it, uh, uh, you know, according to the list that we have sent you previously? I think you can email to Ingrid and to myself to so okay. clear and we will okay. then distribute to all the other sites. Amazing. All right. And then I've, I've just seen some requests from um, Faiza and from Natasha to receive um, this. So if, if we do send it to, to Ingrid and, and Susan, that's okay. And you'll distribute, right? Yes. Okay. Amazing. Oh, and Carol. <laughs> all right. So I'm hearing you all. Thank you very much. <laughs> I know it was a little bit up here, uh, jumping around with a techno perspective, but you know what? Nurses are not tech savvy all the time, but we're getting there. <laughs> all right. Um, are there any other questions uh, regarding the process? Anything that you'd like to know? You can even pose a newborn screening question to me if you like. <laughs> if that is something that um, you, I'm sure you guys are doing a few of those as well, especially in the hospitals, yeah? Ronnie, will you please just uh, send us all the uh, uh, new revision of the request forms yes. as well as the price list because they do ask us the price the indication yes. on that or do we just refer them to the client service at next buyer for quotation? I think maybe just refer to us because um, we can also then just get a little bit more information regarding their um, medical aids and uh, coverage and that kind of stuff. So, okay. um, yeah, I think it might be better just on a one-to-one -one conversation because it will just help, um, you know, for them to understand the particular circumstance. Yeah, and then we can also talk, you know, because it's an expensive test, we can also talk to them about, you know, we do have payment plans. So they pay like a deposit and they can pay it over two or three months and stuff. So it also just help them um, um, feel more comfortable, I think, with, with regards to that, especially if it's a concern of the cost. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks very much. I just want to read here. Thank you for the present. Uh, patient, patients often ask about the price of the test. Can you please advise on that? All right, so I do have uh, the pricing with me just uh, off, off the top. So the standard um, uh, uh, tri screen test that includes chromosome 13, 18, and 21 and the six chromosomes is a current price of 5,950 Rand. Okay, the single um, chromosome test, the T21 test, is 3,900 Rand. And then the additional testing that I did briefly allude to um, is something we call all chromosomes, which is 6,500 Rand. Um, the micro deletions, that's a sample that we send out to the US, um, is 8,500 Rand. And then if they do micro deletions and all chromosomes, it's 10,500. So, but that document, I'm sure Ash will be able to, we'll share then with, with Susan and Ingrid also, um, just so that you are aware. Okay, let's just have a look. Um, why is a butterfly not allowed for collections? People often, dis sorry if this was already discussed. All right, Carol, I'm just going to, I will repeat. Um, okay, because a butterfly, the bore of the butterfly needle is very, very narrow. And oftentimes when we take in a butterfly, there's a additional pressure if we're using an, a syringe to draw the blood. I do appreciate that some people have very difficult zones, but if we're putting that much pressure on that sample, there's a very, very high chance that it will hemolyze. And if we received a hemolyze sample, we can't test it and we need to do a redraw anyway. Okay, so I know we do face some challenges with some pa patients with, with really skinny veins. Okay, all right, um, are there any other questions? Hi, good morning. Um, it's Naomi from Summit Corp. Hi. Um, we've got one of the patients asking us how long does the results take? Okay, seven to ten working days. Okay, thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure. Okay, are there any other questions? Here's something else in the chat box. Thank you. All right, thanks very much. <laughs> 
Okay, stop. Oh, how long can we, sorry, yeah, is a question from Erica. Thank you. Staff wants to know how long we can keep the sample before before, uh, before we collect it. Um, ideally, not more than 24 hours. Um, the reason being is that, especially if it is coming um, a distance, we want to get it here to check QC. So we need to just check all the um, uh, test requirements to make sure that it does meet quality control and then we process. All right, so rather we have it within the five days that you keep it for five days. Okay, so ideally we want to receive the sample or at least have arranged the collection within um, 24 hours after the sample being collect, uh, sample being taken from the client. My ask um, weekends and after hours. Okay, so let's say if you take the sample on a Friday afternoon, we will arrange collection on Monday, um, unless there is somebody available at depot on, on a Saturday, but then it depends where we are. I mean, where are you based? So I can just answer you accurately. No, I'm just asking in general. Oh, yeah, general, okay. I'm, so, I'm in the now, yeah. Okay, so you know, yeah. So I mean, if it is a sample that's collected on a Friday or a Saturday, we will arrange collection for the Monday, okay? Because we've got, as I said, that will fall within the five days, and it, it should get to us. But if we've got a sample that's coming from, I don't know, Swakopmund, okay, it does happen sometimes, um, and then it'll come via Cape Town and then to us. So. That, that often is a challenge because then we need to try and expedite it. So will we be able to then send a courier for a, a same day collection? Um, and, and we will try and do that because we want to try and avoid samples getting here later than five days. Okay, so if it's a far out or um, what we call um, an outline area, we do try and speak to the couriers to see can they, um, you know, collect on the same day. But that also has a cost implication for us and then a logistics implication for the depot because is there somebody there after one o'clock on a Saturday, for instance, to, to allow it to be collected. So those um, instances we'll deal with on a one-to-one -one basis. But generally, you know, if you take the samples on a Friday or Saturday, we can arrange collection for the Monday. Thank okay. you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Is there anything else? I'm just checking the questions again to make sure I've answered them all. Okay. Why is the butterfly? How long can we keep? Okay. The price we've spoken of. Um, okay. I think I have um, answered the questions. Is there anything else? Are we all good? Thank you so much for your time, Bronwyn. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much for, for your attendance. And um, yeah, I appreciate And Just remember, you are all appreciated because mm, we often don't hear that enough. <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. But thanks very, very much. And we'll be in touch. So I'll, I'll ask Ashley to, to share um, the presentation and those documents as we discussed. Okay. Thank you. Amazing. Thanks very Thank much. You. Be well. Thank Take care. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. This is sister, eh? Mm -hmm.